story time. So some time ago, <clears throat> I was actually on a contract at this hospital. It was a short contract. It was only an eight week contract, but I had already decided by like the eighth day that I wouldn't be going beyond eight weeks. So with every nursing contract, there's always the option to extend. Sometimes they just need you for a certain amount of time. Sometimes you don't really want to be there for more than the set contract time. But more often than not, in my experience, an extension is on the table. So beyond the contract term. Like I said, by day eight, I knew that I did not want to be there for eight weeks, okay? Let me tell y'all what happened. So on one night shift that I was working, who night shift was a doozy, praise God, I don't do that shit anymore. On one night shift, I was working. And it was a busy night. Now, night shift isn't often terribly busy throughout the entire shift. The first few hours of the shift, I would say the first four to maybe six hours, depending on your patient load, is you running. Uh, and when I say running, you're busy. The rest of the shift really should be significantly uh, easier to manage. I don't want to call it easy altogether, but easier than that first either quarter or first half of the shift. Not for me that night, y'all. Your girl was running, running, running from beginning to end. Now, keep in mind, what I do is when I get ready to throw away an IV bag or throw away a medication of any sort, my paranoia is what forces me to rip off the patient information and discard of it in the little shredder, if it makes sense. If it's too sticky and it's already disintegrating in my fingers, I'll just throw it in the trash. Either way, I always, 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 I'm telling you it's my paranoia because even when I get mail and I don't feel like I need the mail or I've already done with what I needed with the package, I'm ripping my name off and everything with my information off of that mail, ripping it up and throwing it away. It's just habit. It's second nature now. I never forget to do it. So with a night shift, oftentimes, because we don't technically leave until like eight o'clock in the morning after huddle and after you give report, we're often there when administration is starting to come in. So when the supervisor or the manager or the whatever, there are always so many people, so many managers, you never know who to talk to. But that's the time that they start coming in. You know, when you are winding down from your shift, you're looking for nurses to give report to, you're not really, you're tired. It's the end of a night shift, okay? So I was all done giving report and one of my patients who I had already given report on, their IV starts beeping. So I'm like, let me just go take care of this real quick before I officially leave because the nurse I just gave report to obviously has stuff to do before she starts officially rounding on her patients. So I go in there, I get rid of the old IV bag, replace it with a brand new IV bag, peel off the patient information, throw everything where it needed to go, said my goodbyes. Okay? Let's say it's about 9.30 in the morning. I'm off, obviously, I'm home. I'm preparing breakfast and then I'm gonna go to bed. You know, I've already showered, the time has come. This headband is a little tight and I feel like that's why the it's starting to get itchy where it's like pressing. Anyways, I'm not taking it off right now, so it is what it is. As I was saying, I'm home home. I'm in home mode, okay? I get a call. I don't necessarily recognize the number, but in certain healthcare facilities, the first six numbers are usually the same. And those last four digits is the extension to wherever it is in the hospital you're calling. So I did recognize it, but also not really. I answered it. And typically during these times, I answer because, again, like I said, I knew I wasn't extending beyond eight weeks. 
So in my mind, I'm like, this is probably my recruiter or this is probably another. Once you start doing travel nursing, recruiters from all different agencies start calling you from numbers you don't necessarily recognize. I was ready to accept those calls because I was not going to stay at this hospital longer than eight weeks. Anyways, <clears throat> I answer, it's the nursing supervisor. Let's call her Kathy. Ashley, hi. Yes, I just had a couple of questions for you. Okay. Okay, Kathy. What are your questions? She's like, well, here at... XYZ facility. We do our best to protect patient information. And so we do strongly encourage uh, that each nurse removes all patient identification information off of their medications. Can I ask you to do that moving forward? I said, Kathy, I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about, Kathy? So Kathy was like, well, we did notice that, you know, one of your patient's information um, was exposed in the trash and poorly disposed of. So there are certain trash bins for certain things. And the IVs go into a separate trash bin. And she's saying that I threw it in the regular trash I was like, um, Kathy, I make it a habit to rip all of my patient's information off of their medication. I don't know, I don't really know what you're talking about. I need you to be a little bit more specific. Which patient was it? Well, that's not really something we can disclose. Kathy, you called my phone at 9.30 in the morning which for me is 9.30 at night. You knew that I worked last night. This is inappropriate. We are beyond whatever it is you're talking about. We're past that. What patient are you talking about? Well, you know, I just, I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of the policy and the protocol and da 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 I said, Kathy, you've wasted an immense amount of my time. You've wasted a great deal of my time. Well, we're just, no, 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 no. Absolutely not. Please, in the future, do not ever do anything like this to me again. You will wait until you see me again, face to face. Please respect my time. I hung up the phone. I think what... Kathy wanted me to say was, oh, you're talking about patient Jane Doe in room 12. Yeah, I may have accidentally, I feel like she was calling expecting to get a confession out of me for something that she was trying to pin onto me because I'm a registry. And here's something that needs to be understood, registry or contract nurse or whatever. There isn't necessarily a penalty for getting rid of registry or contract staff. A hospital has more to lose or a little bit more backfire to deal with when they fire staff. You know, especially those that are a part of a union. Travelers are on their own. They're on their own. There is very little penalty for a healthcare institution for just randomly getting rid of a traveler. Very little. It's easier, and it also doesn't necessarily make, like if me as a traveler, if I do something that makes the facility look bad, it technically doesn't really make them look bad because I am not an employee of the facility. And that's what ends up happening. The registry or the travelers end up getting hit with things just for the sake of the facility saving face. And I'm like, what are y'all doing? You need us. Y'all need us. Cut it out. Stop playing these games. Kathy really called my phone to play games. 
Anywho, I tell a lot of stories where I feel like I am standing up for myself, but on a regular, regular day, when I go into a facility or I take a contract or I pick up a shift, I am very cordial, friendly, chatty. I am never in a rush to jump down anybody's throat. However, I am very in love with defending myself and speaking up for myself. I'm not going to go in search of a circumstance just to say, oh, I stuck up for myself. But when the circumstance comes to find me, goes out of their way and calls me during sleepy hours, yeah, I'm gonna have something to say. And I'm saying all of this to say that I just wrote a comic book. It's titled Namakasi. And Namakasi is Congolese for with strength. You guys should definitely stay tuned, okay, um, in anticipation for that pre-order date of November 15th. That's Friday coming up, okay? Pre-order with the link in the caption below, all right? It'll be available for pre-order again on November 15th. Okay? And I'm also going to be doing a meet and greet and book signing. It's not going to be until the new year, but I mean, I'm saying not going to be until the new year. Like the new year isn't like 10 seconds away. So I'll have more deets for you on that. Make sure you get your copy. Make sure you order a poster so that you can get that signed at the meet and greet and book signing. Anywho, to my fellow travelers and my fellow registry, please make sure you cover yourself. Make sure that you get insurance, malpractice insurance for nurses. That does exist. Because these facilities will pinpoint you. Not all of them. Don't get me wrong. I've had exceptional experiences just as much as I've had significantly less than exceptional experiences. But for the less than exceptional, protect yourself. Protect, protect, protect yourself. Cover yourself, document everything to a T, down to the fine details, please. Because they will, they will dig into that ass, okay? Anywho, subscribe to my website, share this video, get excited for my upcoming comic book. Um, my most recent video prior to this very one is a preview of me dressed as Poison Ivy, promoting Namakasi. Um, I'm really excited and I would love for you guys to join this journey with me and get excited with me. Click the link below. I love you guys. Thanks.